It's amazing. <laughs> Are you recording? Oh, yes. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Thank sounds you, PVD. Good. Thank you to PVD for uh, uh, having a uh, love of trauma. Yes, yes, we yes. definitely love some trauma over here. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, I, I, I'm just going to call you Uncle Lloyd because that's apparently what everybody calls you, if that's okay. Sure, Josh. Yeah, uh, Uncle Lloyd, thanks for coming on. Uh, greatly appreciate it. Uh, I really want to thank the uh, the ship boys, uh, Ben and Derek Johnson. We had yeah. them on. Yeah, should have and, productions. Uh, uh, that's a, a part of the trauma legacy. Uh, you know, the Hudson School of Painting, uh, many uh, trauma school of filmmaking. It's, it's quite a number of uh, good communities of, uh, of of filmmakers who are not afraid, who are willing to try to say something that might make the world a slightly better place. Yes. It has productions, definitely. Yes. It may be a little wonky, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, what's right. going on? This is Brandon. This is Dave. And this is Joshua. It's Lloyd Kaufman, president of Trauma Entertainment, creator of the Toxic Avenger, and uh, the amazing worshiper of uh, PVD horror. I, I, I can never get enough of PVD horror. I've had sure. plenty of VD, but not PVD. <laughs> keep going if you want. This is Georgina Jane. Uh, I'm a film actress uh, known for uh, Cupid, Don't Speak, and soon to be released Cannibal Troll. And you are tuning into PVD Horror. And uh, Brandon's on, uh, uh, um, aren't you on Grinder, Brandon? <laughs> <laughs> I got kicked <laughs> off. I got kicked off. Not anymore. Oh, not anymore. Okay. <laughs> I thought we set up a meeting. So. Oh no, that was, that was, we had a pre-meeting. I got you. Okay. Yeah, right. I, I got. I was busy that night. I had something to do, so I'm, I'm sorry. I bet you did. I bet. <laughs> oh, oh, oh yeah, <laughs> Dave uh, knows all about it. Well, I think, uh, uh, we don't get distracted. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> all right, Brandon, you're up. <laughs> all right. So you have over 50 years of experience and success in independent filmmaking. It's awesome that you share your art and you have written books on how to make your own damn movie all the way to how to sell your own damn movie. How does it feel to have created opportunities for a lot of big name directors, actors, writers and with your platform? Well, uh, Troma has indeed uh, given birth to a number of famous and successful people, Trey Parker and Matt Stone, James Gunn. Uh, Samuel Jackson's first movie is Death by Temptation, which may be our very best movie. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't direct it, so got a shot at being good. And um, a lot of famous people. Paul Walker got, got killed in that car crash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Fergie, Fergie uh, of the uh, Black Eyed Peas. Oh, okay. She was a monster in the closet as a little kid. I can go on forever. And it feels great. It feels yeah. terrific. I just wish Eli Roth and James Gunn and... Uh, and the others could, uh, especially Trey Parker and Matt Stone, give Troma a little more, uh, how do you say it? Oh, no, I can't blame, no, James Gunn is great. He puts yeah. me in all the yeah. movies. And, uh, Trey and Matt used to put me in their movies, uh, the South Park guys, but I'm afraid I'm in the rear view mirror. But it sure is nice to know if you see Suicide mm -hmm. Squad, you can't help but miss the uh, the trauma <laughs> and the thought of James Gunn. You can take the man out of uh, trauma. Sure. But you can't take trauma out of the man. And that's so true. Uh, you know, in fact, check out uh, po Polka Dot Boy in uh, Su Suicide Squad. Sorry. Yep. Uh, 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 you'll see there's a Polka Dot guy in uh, Tromeo and Juliet, the second male lead. Uh, huh. Murray, okay. Murray, 
uh, where's a polka dot thing? Except he comes up, I think he comes, uh, he goes to the uh, big party as a Capulet party uh, as, a, as a cow, but it's a polka dot. Uh, whatever yeah. he has on his, oh no, that's Joey goes as a cow. I can't remember, but Maury wears polka dots, but I can't remember. Uh, anyway, there you go. Yeah. That's just a sample of the incredible trauma aroma that pervades. <laughs> The trauma aroma. I love I that. Love that. Yeah. Check out the, uh, the guys from uh, uh, crap. The uh, one that's a really a good uh, superhero movie. I think the first R-rated one. Uh, they've made two of them now. Uh, Deadpool. Yeah. Deadpool. Deadpool. Those directors yep. the, the love trauma. I mean, you could see it. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know that's that's great. You know, I think it'll take a while. I, Maybe when I'm dead for 30 years, uh, I think the world will appreciate uh, the trauma work. Uh, sure. You know, hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm is being uh, very busy with that movie, my latest. Uh, we're very busy getting turned down by every single <laughs> film festival. But I guarantee you, the people in it, uh, people, the guy who wrote it, uh, William Shakespeare, uh, uh, I think people are going to remember Shakespeare, don't you? I think yeah, I, th I, I think he might stick around for a little bit. <laughs> I'm really talking about Brandon Basson, who I, uh, whose latest movie I produced, uh, uh, Slashing uh, to the Final Beginning. He's definitely a talent. Uh, Mercedes the Muse, who just finished up a movie I produced called Divide and Conquer, which is uh, what she calls the new feminism. And I agree, uh, it's a terrific, that's why I'm, uh, invested in it and uh i think you'll see some more major stars uh yeah. as far as hashtag shakespeare shitstorm i'm afraid like the toxic avenger it'll take 35 years for for it to sort of how do you say it uh, uh, dissolve into the uh soup of today's not today's but uh, the culture of 2000 35 maybe if i'm lucky but I'll be I, I did see the uh trailer for that divine and conquer and that looks pretty that's pretty great. crazy oh, yeah you should have mercedes on she's terrific she yeah. wrote and, and directed and produced uh, two other movies that uh, prior to divide and conquer that are on uh uh trauma now it's you know they're great they're wonderful and divide and conquer is really good because she had a little money to, so she can you know get a decent special effects sure. company and uh and Veda, Veda Callisto from Hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm has a part. Uh, it, it's very, very good. And it's got a nice uh, message. And uh, I think people are going to like it. Awesome. It's already been invited into a few. Actually, Brandon and Mercedes movies are more accessible than Hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm. And they are getting invited to uh, film festivals. Nice. That's awesome. The, uh, so I'm, I'm going to go off trauma for a little bit. Um, and I just wanted to ask you a personal question. Uh, out of the group of PBD Horror, I mean, there's three of us, but then we, our PBD Horror family extends to our live events and uh, yeah. we do a lot of stuff in the community. I'm the only one that's married. Um, and okay. I have a hard time keeping the hectic, hectic schedule in a married life balance. Oh, and terrible. I know you've been married forever and ever and ever. And right. I gotta know, what's the secret? There's nothing left. I mean, it's, you know, it's just total, you know, I'm a, I'm a, what do you call it? Uh, just a shell of my, you know, I get, I have nothing left. I have no penis. I've got no, I have nothing. You're also a homosexual uh, married man too, right? Gay married man. Gay. Yeah. Full <laughs> yeah. Gay married man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't, uh, you know, the marriage thing, get out of it. <laughs> yeah i'm only 12 years in i'll jump now Woo, get out uh she's gonna be making blue apron tonight you know about blue apron yeah the, the the cooking thing yeah you get the you get your meal it's all you don't have to go out and buy anything everything's yeah. in the box it's all yeah. chopped up and you just cook it for about 15 20 minutes very good very very good and it uh, keeps her busy and i can uh yeah, and get a little time to do something else yeah so shout, shout out to our sponsors blue apron thank you for sponsoring this podcast <laughs> yes blue apron trophy wife too blue apron trophy wife is a major uh, sponsor of pvd uh, uh and new very comics of course uh, yeah, very comics you spend time oh. in very comics at all what did you say 
Isn't Blueberry Comics in uh, 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 Newberry, Newberry? Newberry Comics, yeah. In uh, Rhode Island, right? Yeah. Yep. 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 A great place. I, I've been there a few times. It's wonderful. I, I don't yeah, think that's but... I think once they invited me, but I've been back uninvited a few times. <laughs> they, it's very, they never invited me back, but the inv it's a great store. And yeah. I hope store. Are they still around? Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So here, here's a secret. It's a Rhode Island thing that uh, we steal stuff from Boston. Um, so Newberry Comics started on Newberry Street in Mass, in Boston, Mass, and we just stole it and made it a Rhode Island thing. That's what Ooh. we did. Well, yeah. they deserve to be stolen, those Massachusetts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we Even steal everything from them. <laughs> Massachusetts drivers, they are totally insane. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we yep. call them assholes. Yeah. Just look at Teddy, uh, Teddy Ken Senator Teddy Kennedy. <laughs> yeah. he drove right off the bridge. You know? That's right. <laughs> uh, so, so Lloyd, I wanted to ask you. Um, well, hold on, you uh, Josh, uh, to answer, uh, Joshua, uh, Josh, to, to answer, sorry. Uh, to oh, answer your question, is that the one right there? Uh, <laughs> that was a, a dick pic I just sent you, oh, Lloyd. Might <laughs> <laughs> uh, fine. It's got, why is it curved upright, though? It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. a, if you need one of those uh, advertised uh, medicines, uh, you know, it, you? what is it called? It's a disease. Uh, anyway, it's a beautiful <laughs> bit. Thank you. Um, just it needs to be straightened out. Uh, anyway, I think the key to marriage is just uh, you got to listen a little bit, which I don't. But uh, I think um, uh, it takes a while. But I realize my wife is smarter, and if she's sort of strong on something, I should just, you know, okay, she's probably right. Yeah. My partner, at, uh, Michael Hurst, same thing. They're both very fair. Uh, they're both usually right. Um, uh, and uh, um, just Michael doesn't talk so much. And, uh, you know, <laughs> anyway, they're both very fair. And usually when they insist on something, if they push, I, 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 I usually give in because I think, you know, over the 50 years, They've been right for the most part. Sure. In fact, I had an argument with Michael today where I didn't back down. And then tonight I was thinking, hmm, he's usually right. Maybe I should, maybe, uh, maybe I should just agree. Uh, anyway, enough yeah. of my problems. But I think that the trick to marriage is, at least in my case, was sort of uh, listening and uh, or at least pretending to listen, <laughs> kind of thing. Sure. <laughs> Take the Words to live by. Take the, take her seriously, you know. I think a lot of husbands don't take their wives seriously. You know, they're they most of them are smarter than the husbands. My wife and her friends are much smarter than uh, their husbands, and uh, I, my wife can, is uh, I think smarter than I am for sure. She she became the New York State film. Let me try to turn this off. She there's a text. She became the film commissioner of the great state of New York, uh, appointed by both Republicans and Democrats. Uh, uh, she was there for 20 years, and uh, New York has 10 new studios that were built, and uh, uh, they need uh, a crew. The, the unions need more members. There's so many jobs and so many movies and TV shows, and, and um, uh, it's exploding because my wife created the incentive whereby if you make a movie in New York, you get uh, a third of your money, your budget. You get a third back in cash. So uh, that has attracted a shitload of movies. Sure. And uh, we didn't, we didn't, we never did it until she retired. We, we never asked for the subsidy, you know, we never applied for it. Mm -hmm. But any kind of movie in New York, as long as it's not porn or documentary, I think they uh, give you a third of your money. For hashtag Shakespeare shitstorm, we did uh, go in that program because my wife had already retired and the, <clears throat> nobody could say this conflict. Of Does that make it easier for you to film too? Because I, I was watching a documentary of a, a film you had made a while ago. And I know that you were having some problems. Uh, police had told you you couldn't film somewhere. It might've been Terra Firmer, I can't remember. Yes, Terra Firmer. Well, that was our fault. The, uh, the, uh, the uh, production manager was not properly organized. So uh, when we had to have a, a young fat boy with a very small penis yeah. naked, naked across Times Square, uh, the New York police are, are very open-minded and, and uh, uh, they would enjoy the fun. But our, when uh, our production manager applied for the permit, uh, he, he uh, just mentioned man walks across the street 
and he did it like a week before it was time to shoot. Whereas if he would have done it six weeks before the date, uh, you know, we filmed for five weeks. Uh, he, he, uh, we could have done it. The cops would have, we, you know, we would have had a blanket here and a blanket at the other end and the guy could have run across. And, uh, but because we didn't tell them, uh, the cops got angry and they pulled our permit and we only got one take. But luckily uh, it's a pretty good one. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> the reactions of the bystanders are wonderful. <laughs> So I wanted to get into uh, hashtag Shakespeare shitstorm a little bit. Um, so I, I um, yes, let me interrupt I, for one second. I, I apologize. If you want to see the movie, and and you know you don't spread, you know if you just hold on, you know don't show the. You course. can show it, just don't uh, give it away to anybody. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> people invested in. It, you know, I kind of and my my wife and I paid for most of it. So. Be, but you more, you know, if you want to send me an email, I'll, I'll send you the link. That'd be awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. I've well, watched the trailer like three or four times already. Yeah. Um, sure. So, you know, I, I noticed though, you have this gravitation to Shakespeare. Uh, so this is based on The Tempest. You have, obviously you have Tromeo and Juliet. I even see a little bit of like uh, Troma War as being a, a small adaptation maybe of The Tempest as well. Um, with the island theme and stuff uh, yeah, like that. No, it wasn't, uh, no, it, but uh, that's an interesting idea. No, that Troma's War was kind of inspired by Reagan and uh, sure, yeah, and the fact that his administration was glorifying uh, uh, the army and war. And, uh, you know, we just, we finished, I thought we had finished with that. And he also, uh, uh, they were, uh, uh, you're too young to probably remember, but the uh, idea they had was that AIDS was pun a punishment for the uh, yeah. homosexuals that God was punishing them. And, uh, there was no attempt to alert the public, no attempt to publicize AIDS, no attempt to even deal with it, other than a few brave people. Uh, so I figured we'd shove AIDS in the face of the American public. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, it's probably not the most, I mean, I still, we got refused there's a shitty festival called Salem. Oh, it's in Massachusetts. Yeah. You know, they worship uh, killing women, right? Salem. They have the witchcrafts. They're proud of preserving all the cabins where the witches were burned and drowned. And, you know, that's okay. You kill the women. But uh, apparently, hashtag Shakespeare shitstorm was uh, too much. And, uh, and um, uh, the, uh, what, the other thing was, oh, the woman, uh, that wasn't enough. She sent an email saying she had just seen Troma's War and uh, that uh, the fact that we dealt with AIDS uh, in such a shoving, I guess, in such a graphic way, uh, that upset her too, very upsetting. Sure. Um, so I, I wanted, to, I was curious watch though. Citizen, watch Citizen Toxie. <laughs> Citizen Toxie. Oh, I've seen, I have, yeah. Full <laughs> shootings, they're still going on. Yeah, yeah. 99, we made fun of them. Right, yeah. diaper mafia, not, not the Rinko mafia, the, the babies, diaper mafia. But yeah. uh, unfortunately, mm -hmm. uh, the American public still hasn't gotten around to Citizen Toxie. But it's available exclusive on uh, Troma Now. Yes, future. it is. Now. And uh, it's also uh, uh, been remastered. It's beautiful. It's the best Toxic Avenger movie as far as uh, my fans are concerned. It's uh, most ambitious. Um, so. Tell us a little bit about Shakespeare Shitstorm. Um, what do you want people to know about it? What made you do another Shakespeare um, adaptation? That's a good, good question, actually. Uh, I'm glad you asked it. Uh, the point was that uh, I love the Tempest has always been my favorite Shakespearean play. Uh, and it's very trauma. It's full of, a, it's very druggy, that's for sure. Uh, and um, it's got a monster, it's got fairies. It's got uh, a young couple, uh, who I, I always liked uh, young lovers. It's got uh, it's magic, lots of magic, and uh, movies of magic. I, I, I make, I am Prospero. And now that I'm old, <laughs> I can play Prospero. I didn't want to, when we were doing Tromeo and Juliet, I, I wasn't old enough uh, to really understand The Tempest. I, I really, really get it. Um, uh, and so I went in and uh, you know, came up with the storyline. With, by the way, a very talented Gabe Friedman, who with whom I wrote *Poultry Guys: Night of the Chicken Dead*, and yes, he, uh, he worked in the trauma coal mines for ten years, editing uh, uh, most of our movies for ten years, and much more stuff too. He's extremely talented. 
moved out to California, and I'm sure he will uh, walk in the paths of uh, James Gunn and Eli Roth and uh, all the others. Uh, uh, so uh, um, the Tempest is kind of a, a lifelong uh, dream, and it's probably, I, I can't imagine I'll get to make another movie for half a million dollars. So uh, unless something comes to me that I really love, um, I don't think I can afford, uh, nor can my friends afford to lose half a million bucks. <laughs> sure. But if any good script comes along, I'll get that money for sure. And meanwhile, I'm producing uh, smaller budgets with people like Mercedes the Muse and Brandon Bassam. And uh, by the way, the shithouse guys, they're making Weird Deer and uh, I am the uh, producer of that. Um, uh, not uh, intimately involved, but I give them notes and uh, money and uh, it's going to be great. The script is hilarious. Uh, again, yeah. it's uh, uh, you know whether it you know it's it's it, it's out there a bit and it it's uh, has some great social satire and uh, you know there's stuff there to make the world a better place, which Brandon uh, and uh, Mercedes have in their film. They're both entertaining and accessible and and uh, wonderful, and yet they have something to say. Uh, the problem with the movies like uh, Gnarly, what was it, Gnarly Strangler? Have you seen that? Gnarly Strangler, I think it's called. It was in Sundance, I think. But Elijah Wood was a producer. And it's a fine movie, but doesn't, what, what, what is it about? About a guy, you know, pervert. Uh, I mean, you know, it's, it doesn't have a, a, a brave, of course, it, but Elijah Wood is shepherding it. Uh, and uh, I think there's a group of him and others who uh, Sundance loves and, uh, you know, and they're talented people. Uh, yeah. And, and uh, unfortunately, uh, we make movies that uh, might change the world a little bit, but yeah. uh, we are untalented. No, 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 no. Uh, we, are, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> we are movies of the future, but and now we are disrupting media. That's our, we are disrupting media for 48 years. But uh, The Tempest was really, I, if it's my last movie, I, I'm very happy with it. It's great. It's terrific. Yeah. And uh there are several movies like, like a Weir, a Weir Deer that are being made, uh, which are people who had never been on a movie set. Uh, and they're making, uh, there's another one called Cuck Island yeah. with a bunch of uh, alums from Troma. I was just uh, played a part where, uh, I guess I don't want to be a spoiler, a spoiler, but again, script is one, I don't, I'm not the producer. Script is great and uh, has something to say. And um, you know, pretty pretty extreme in its uh, point of view, and but very entertaining. It's going to be terrific, and uh, there are a few others. I'm going to produce another Mercedes the Muse movie, even though we don't know about Divide and Conquer. Uh, again, I don't care. It's about the art. It's about uh, uh, you know doing something that when people see it, they say, "Wow, look at that! That's really interesting. I really had a good time," or I didn't think about it. you know. And unfortunately, we only have about six fans. So it takes time for our movies to, uh, you know, dissolve into the soup of pop culture. And uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Josh and Dave and and Brand, especially Brandon, uh, who I met on Grinder uh, and was so nice to me um, uh, in the pre meeting. We never did meet, but the pre meeting. Uh, Gotta set that up. <laughs> yes. I, hey, asked, what do you guys think about to, to change subjects slightly? Chappelle, what do you think about that turmoil? Uh, the, the, yeah, the... I was I was gonna talk to you. I was gonna talk about like the cancel culture with you about that because I grew up like with raw comedy and everything like that, and people kind of saying how they feel. And so, like for this new generation, I think it's just hard because it's now you're, you're censored and you can't really talk about what you really want to say. And so, like I grew up, like I said, like in the in the urban area you know so things happen you know so that types of stuff happen in my area like a lot of different things like growing up like you like in your films so to me it was always like when you see it on the screen it's like a dark comedy because I, to me it's like i actually like seen this shit you know exactly so i think that a lot of your viewers they don't really live that lifestyle so they get offended by it you know because even with all the racist stuff that goes on in some of the films it can it can touch certain people but like if you sit back and look at it you can say okay well this is this is art you know they're not really trying to like shit on the race and everything like that this, this stuff really goes on in the world so 
with Chappelle, hey, I, te- I think it, it's it, hard. Hey, in Texas, in Texas, yeah. they take black men, they attach him to a chain, they get mm-hmm. in a pickup truck, and then they drive the guy around on the cement until yeah. he has until he has no skin left. Mm-hmm. I, and and no, hardly anybody says a, I put it in. I put it in uh, the uh, uh, citizen taxi, and mm-hmm. it's shocking. I mean, when people see it, they they yeah. they they uh, uh, they stop laughing. But mm-hmm. it happened. We should memorialize it. We should remember it. It's not. You don't want to just take the statue of Robert E. Lee and put it in the New York Historical Society, which is what they're going to do, so the bougies can see it. Right. It, it's about uh, getting people to think about it. And uh, uh, so what if the you know citizen taxi? I was at I, I had focus groups and uh, I'll never forget the NYU one where uh, before we finish, we usually show the movie in either interlock or um, uh, now we don't we can do it on digital. But I, there was one guy who was laughing hysterically from the beginning until that pickup truck uh, scene. And then he stopped. And it was like the audience went into a brick wall. Well, good. Uh, they should. They should see that. They should know it's part of our culture. Same with the school shootings. I'm sorry. Uh, nobody's doing anything about it. The guys in Congress who are feeding at the public trough, trough um, you know, there's $2 billion, $2 trillion, $3 trillion. How much of that's going to go to uh, to the community? You know, you know it's going to go to construction firms and uh, <laughs> probably a lot to the coal miners who can, you know, and uh, whatever, you know, so China can buy the coal. I mean, how much is, you know that they're going to be, uh, what do you call those things that they put in the the bills, uh, you know, uh, earmarks, earmarks, right? Uh, yes, uh, Virginia will sign, but we want a, a bridge named after, you know, the bridge to nowhere kind of thing. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I, I've had gay people, uh, the only people in number one in the Toxic Avenger who supported Toxie uh, toward the end of the movie was his mother, um, who didn't uh, support Toxie until he almost got, until he, she thought he was going to get destroyed. Uh, the children of Tromaville and the gay guys, uh, the ones who are openly gay. That was it. Uh, the whole public was against him. It was, uh, you know, uh, like a storm. You know, you know what I'm talking about. And yep. and uh, uh, and uh, I mean, you look at our politics; uh, they're impeccable. It's just, uh, you know, to some extent, we're ahead of our time. And you look at these major movies now, and uh, they're using stuff that uh, we uh, we we created or we started. Or you know, look at the full head crushing, right? The full head crushing, uh, Dave. Uh, in the Toxic Avenger, when yeah. we first had the people were aghast. They said, oh, this is terrible. You, uh, 13-year-old kids, heads getting crushed. <laughs> now Spielberg's putting in, they're going to be head crushings in West Side Story. Everybody's doing it. So, oh, uh, geez, yeah. You know, Thomas, uh, you know I, I think, and the people who've worked for us over the years, that's they always say, when you're dead, Lloyd, uh, you know, they'll suddenly realize, gee, uh, you know, the New York Times will give you an obituary and suddenly uh, you'll be a national treasure, but uh, it's going to take a while. Yeah. A lot of great artists. Van Gogh made not one cent in his lifetime. Uh, um, the guy who put the urinal on the wall, uh, <laughs> the French guy who put a urinal on the wall and signed it. That's a, uh, Now it sells for half a million bucks. Yeah. But, uh, he's a surrealist. Uh, oh, crap. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. They were not appreciated <laughs> in their day. Yeah. But uh, now they are. So my guess is uh, we we will be appreciated uh, and more than we are. But I'll tell you, our fans, you guys are great. Look, thank you so much for even letting me talk. So <laughs> how grateful am I? And uh, you you go on my Twitter. Their fans are making Halloween costumes. They're wearing trauma uh, epoxy masks that uh, some of them made. They've got. Uh, I mean, the fans really support us. And and. My guess is they don't need trauma now, but I think they they love our movies and they want to keep us going, so they subscribe and it's it's cheap as hell and the first month is free. Yeah, and there's all sorts of surprises on there, including uh, a lot of lessons that have come out of my uh, make your own damn movies. <laughs> okay. By yeah. the way, I hate to keep you blabbing, but uh, the book that James Gunn and I wrote, all I need to know about filmmaking, I learned from. Uh, 
from PVD uh, podcast. I mean, from the Toxic Avenger. <laughs> um, that book has been translated into Spanish. It just came out, and it's beautiful. It's so much nicer than the one that Putnam, uh, the big time one that was came out. And uh, it's got color photograph. I mean, it's beautiful. And 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 there's one the Chinese uh, put out too. Uh, two of my books, uh, China. Uh, put out in Chinese because uh, they don't buy the rights. They just they just do it. Yeah, they just do it. <laughs> Surprise! Yeah. So all, our, all of our movies uh, there, uh, you know, with better when they put them out on D, on DVD or Blu-ray, they the Chinese make better packaging than ours too. Oh, I bet. They don't have to pay for the rights. They can put the money into advertising and pirating. Uh, uh, you know, and and. Uh, graphics and making it you know they don't pay anything so uh, you know we actually have to make the movie <laughs> and then eat and support our uh, children luckily my wife was the new york state film commissioner yeah <laughs> so <laughs> Those that, that brings me to uh an interesting question when you started uh kind of going off on the politics there there was um o- almost like a uh i i wouldn't even know what to call it but it was like a, an after school special almost uh when i saw it and i was really into it it was independent artists versus corrupt cartels and yes, that's right that's a good thing yeah yeah and i i'm a huge fan of independent horror and i have supported independent horror from way back uh in the uh, vhs days with like wave productions and brain damage and i mean everybody that went under at this point uh, but still, there, there's a couple like SRS is still going and, and stuff like that. Um, so that brings me to the question. How can we, the little independent guy, fight the big media cartels? Boy, we have to elect officials that are going to protect net neutrality on the Internet and, and uh, 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 do something about this cartel that is clearly... I made that little documentary, I spent a lot of time on it uh, uh, to uh, try to get people to think about that because uh, now suddenly everybody's worried about privacy, but how about the fact that, uh, you know, it all kind of boils, the entertainment all boils to the gatekeepers of, of Netflix and two or three others. And, uh, and then when they do make a deal with the independents, uh, you can't live on it, you know, it's awful. And then, you know, maybe they give you a job uh, in Hollywood, you get to direct a movie, and suddenly you make an independent movie that does okay, then they give you another chance, it doesn't do well, and that's it, you're done. You know, they might give you an office in the studio lot so you can be buried and do nothing else. So uh, uh, I, I think the best thing is either go out west and work your way up, like, you know, hey, James Gunn, Eli Roth, Trey Parker and Matt Stone, um, Samuel L. Jackson, who I haven't met, but I, I, uh, I know the, you know, I worked with the director and the other cast members, they loved him. Uh, and that was his first movie. But these are all great people. They're wonderful people. I, I've met a few famous people uh, and some of them are, are terrific. And some of the successful directors and producers who are in my books, uh, they're wonderful, they're great. Uh, but it's unfortunate they are a very tiny percentage of the people who uh, unfortunately are the gatekeepers and the ass lickers and the uh, scumbags and the crooks and you know the people who think they can make a fast buck by ripping off. Right now, right now we discovered uh, a fan told us that our, 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 our many, many, many of our movies are on a, uh, a company with which we haven't done business with for, for several years. And they've still got them up there with the, and they've got advertising. People are advertising on that platform they're advertising Tromeo and Juliet, big, big, big. <laughs> they get, they get, those are our movies. We sh- no wonder we're, 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 that's not right. Yeah. And they didn't pay us, right? We had a deal with them five years ago, maybe, but that's over. It ended maybe five years ago. So, you know, it's a problem, a big problem. It ain't easy. But I think you either have to go in the establishment and work your way through. And I mean, James Gunn loves cinema. There's no question about it. He loves cinema. <clears throat> He's a good guy and extremely talented and can uh, make it through the... John Voigt, who I became friendly with, uh, he, he says I'm the uh, Aristophanes of uh, today's film world. Well, to some extent, I am. Um, the satire, you know, satire, which uh, mm-hmm. Trey and Matt, if you look at South Park, I mean, they 
you know, and they they talk about it. They were clearly first two seasons were trauma all the way. Now they've gone way, way above. Yeah. <laughs> they are more brilliant than ever. And that the first two seasons were brilliant, uh, but they they had things in the cartoon that you know we put it in uh, real <laughs> real actors, <laughs> and it, it, uh, head crushing looks a lot worse when you see it uh, sort of done for real. <laughs> Even though in our movies it's still a cantaloupe with a with a uh, <laughs> and a happy face. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know if that answers your question, but uh, it's uh, you know it's yeah, it's I, close I, enough. If you're on your own. I think the best thing is to, you know, keep your day job. The miracle of digital uh, format, digital world, the digital miracle is it has democratized the making of cinema. So anybody can make a movie, anybody can make a video, anybody can anybody can do anything uh, and put it up on YouTube and maybe uh, it'll get successful. Or you have your, you sell them at, uh, at uh, we have the filmmakers who we uh, work with who are on Troma now. We don't, we don't even have, the, they sell their own uh, hard goods at conventions and, uh, you know, you make one movie and you still have to work as a bartender, but, uh, you know, we let the people use our table at these conventions so they can sell their stuff. Uh, uh, you know, if we have a little room on the table, we'll let them put their stuff, hang out and sell stuff and keep the money. Uh, so, so they can get help from other independents and maybe the second movie does a little money and then the they get a third movie and then, and eventually they can spend less time being a bartender uh, uh, or a server rather and uh, spend more time making movies and doing what they love. And uh, so unfortunately I'm going the other way. I'm uh, going to have to go out and give $2 blowjobs. Uh, I'm going to have to go back. <laughs> to Sorry, I didn't mean to. Good thing you're on Grinder. <laughs> What's that? I said, good thing you're on that Grinder. Yeah, well, that, nah, it's no good. I'm too old. No, too old. But you know, sometimes I get a kind, kind person, <laughs> kind soul. <laughs> now, how will the remake of Toxic Avenger hold up in this generation? Good. That's really interesting. I wanted to, I, I wanted to, to behind the scenes. Uh, they mm -hmm. finished shooting, by the way, and I'm oh. in it, but don't tell anybody. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm supposed to not say anything. Uh, mm. uh, so, uh, but I imagine you can say that. Uh, uh, I'm, you know, I mean, the, a lot of the big time directors just put, stick me in, uh, who have worked with us. And the director of this movie is a very talented dude and a really good guy. He lives in Austin and um, he has, he, his script is much better than the first Toxic Avenger, uh, Macon Blair. Uh, have you seen Green Room, Dave? Yes. Yes. Green Room was great. Yeah, it's really great. He wrote that, and I think he's in it. And he and and uh, Wood uh, Elijah Wood, who's in the Toxic Avenger, the remake, uh, the reimagining. It's really going to be Macon's Toxic. I mean, it's, I okay. think the credits are going to say uh, Lloyd or uh, Lloyd Kaufman's film by Macon Blair of Lloyd Kaufman's Toxic Avenger. But this is his version of Toxic Avenger, mm -hmm. and it's it's wonderful. If if they if the script gets put up on screen, which it seems to be, uh, they've wrapped uh, and uh, it, it, I think it's gonna be great. So uh, they got a great cast. They've, they've done some casting that's very unique. Uh, do you know who's uh, playing the Toxic Avenger? Isn't it Peter Dinklage? Yes, it's yeah, great. That's right. Out of all the actors in the world, they picked him. That's wonderful, that's great. That's better than Troma. I, I wouldn't even have thought of that. You know, I might have thought of having a toxic go trans or, uh, you know, but I never would have thought of him uh, as, as Peter Dinklage. And he's such a good actor. I mean, he's really good. You've seen him in uh, a TV show, right? And he's, no matter what, the station master and uh, yeah. well, he's very good. And I just saw him, <laughs> my uh, wife, uh, who I'm supposed, I have to call her the commissioner. The commissioner is on the board of the Hampton Film Festival. Uh, uh, and um, we just were there and saw a bunch of movies and we saw Cyrano starring Peter Dinklage. That's terrific. It's wonderful. I mean, Cyrano de Bergerac by, you know, based on the Edmund Rostand play. What a great interpretation. He's wonderful. And they have music. They sing. They sing. It's touching. The audience was crying. Um, Legendary tells me that, Peter, that there's a lot of, uh, uh, of, of, uh, of Oscar talk 
for Peter in Cyrano. So if that if he gets nominated, imagine the Oscar nominated Peter Dinklage in, in Toxic Avenger. <laughs> it might make my fifty years of being humiliated, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, at least kind of okay, you know, at least there's yeah. some kind of. I mean, the fact that Toxic Avenger, a movie that two years uh, nobody did, was crickets, nothing for two years, nobody got it, and then suddenly uh, the small theater in uh, New York, uh, the woman who ran it, who was French. Uh, understood the humor that it's not supposed to be scary. It's uh, it's uh, it's uh, you know um, it's slapstick and political mm -hmm. satire and uh, disgusting maybe and shocking, but it, uh, there's nothing in it that's going to scare you unless you're five years old and you shouldn't be in the theater. Sure. <laughs> you see blood sucking freaks at five years old. <laughs> <laughs> we got yes. the question for later. later. We got into trouble with blood sucking freaks about thirty years ago. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, this is <laughs> go ahead, I, Josh. So <laughs> I, I'm just gonna skip ahead with blood sucking oh. freaks because um, oh, I love oh, that. Oh, yes. The way we handled the MPAA, which is very unfair, and would chop up. You know, they they Bruce Willis with fight with the uh, fight. What is it? Uh, what was his movie? Uh, play, uh, dead? No, uh, the big Bruce Willis oh, movie. Die Hard. Die Hard. Right. You know, yeah. violence, no problem. Everything's left in. So we based our violence uh, and uh, they cut every, the MPA just destroyed Troma's war. So after they did that, we would put this, you know, we'd get the R rating, but we'd put a lot of the footage back and the theater, you know, send it to the theaters. Uh, because it was, it was, it was always an R rating. It was, even our version was less than R, uh, R rated. But we did that with Blood Sucking Freaks. The R rated version was about 55 minutes and the director's cut was 95 minutes. And we sent it to a theater in, in the Bronx of New York and a woman, Blood Sucking Freaks it was called, and a woman with an R rating, a woman took her five-year-old to see it. And uh, we, uh, we got into trouble. What's she doing with a five-year-old right. a movie called Blood Sucking What right. does she think? Even if it's, even if it's a 55-minute <laughs> <a> version. <laughs> but we had to... Uh, we had to pay a fine and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, the MPAA, we don't go to the rating board anymore because uh, the theater business is, uh, again, a, a, a much worse cartel than it has mm -hmm. ever been. It's more under the thumb of Rupert Murdoch and those guys than it's ever been. And uh, I don't know why the uh, Reddit crowd uh, gave all that money to AMC. I don't know why they, they supported AMC. AMC was basically bankrupt, they've destroyed the independent uh, theatrical community. You know, they've destroyed the opportunities for independent filmmakers um, and uh, be, and they went bankrupt because they didn't have any variety. So now Reddit goes on, buys their stock, causes it to go up. AMC is now uh, able to borrow $2 billion so they can continue playing movies that nobody wants to see. Yeah. Although Legendary just came out with Dune, uh, everybody's very excited about it. Yeah. And it's the biggest uh, day and day yet. It, it's in the theaters and uh, on uh, whatever they call it. It's on uh, HBO Max. HBO Max, yeah. And uh, apparently the biggest success uh, of that uh, mixed, uh, you know, mixed media. Uh, huge success. Doing yeah. They just, they the, the, just announced that they're going to, that they're already committing to a sequel. So... They're rolling with it. Yeah, good for them. Well, <laughs> I tried to watch it. Uh, you know, it's a great film for 13-year-olds, I think. <laughs> I don't know. It may be above my head, but <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't really get into it. Yeah. What do you all think? I haven't yeah. seen the new one. I know the David Lynch one, everybody had, you know, had talked about forever, about how... I, that's actually the only David Lynch film I haven't seen. I love David Lynch, but all the... Um, the messages I heard about how bad it was, I always stayed away from it. And I think that already had kind of shadowed how I was, how I was viewing this new one. So I didn't even pay yeah. mind to it. A huge hit. And I haven't read the reviews, but my guess is they, they're good. You know, it's just, I'm 76 years old. <coughs> I, uh, I think I, uh, you know, I kind of prefer a squid game. Yeah. <laughs> we were just watching that, uh, me and my wife. We just talked about that on the last podcast. Great. Uh, that's 
<laughs> and he's uh, the Busan train ride, or what is it? Busan train. Yeah, train to Busan. Train to Busan. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Right? I mean, really wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great film. Uh, so, I um. Oh, Josh, go ahead. Sorry. Sure, yeah. It's great, but it's it's you know it, it's it got a huge. I mean, clearly it's a wonderful film, but uh, you know, I'm seventy six years old. And... <laughs> the uh, you were talking about blood sucking freaks and. Uh, you know, when that was in the theaters, I was too young to go. I, I wasn't that five-year-old kid, mind you. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> my mom didn't take me. Um, but I, I, I always wondered this because uh, a lot of trauma films are very pro-feminism. Yes. And uh, really push women uh, up. And yeah. what, what I heard was when, it, when Blood Sucking Freaks, when you guys took it over and put it in theaters, a lot of... Um, feminist groups had boycotted the film um, and that's like urban legend yeah and no that is correct here's what happened <laughs> the blood sucking freaks is a, a, a terrible film I would never have gotten involved with it uh, in my current head uh, I think you know it's a it's a very evil film and it's misogynistic and um, it, it it was playing down in Greenwich Village at, a, at one of the famous theaters, I think it's gone now, uh, but it was like the theater in Greenwich Village. And it was doing so well that the theater guys got hired people to pick it. Oh, hi. Mom. I know there's a leak uh, called Coal City. Well, I'm going to go down and look at it first. <laughs> I'll turn the boiler off I'm almost, uh, when I'm finished. You're I'll turn the boiler off. We would have to. You can't, that's the only way to stop the leak. <laughs> I'll, I'll come down. <laughs> you want to come on and say hello? Come and say a quick hello. Uh, they, they've seen the Blue Apron Trophy Wife. Oh. <laughs> Here she the, is. Hi. Uh, how you doing? Hi. DVD podcast. They they love cinema. Nice. Uh, love you, and they uh, uh, love the trauma aroma. So uh, good yeah. enough. <laughs> we were, we were told to call you I the gotta block. go downstairs and deal with a puddle, a leak, and uh, I'll yeah. come down. Yeah, yeah. All right. Anyway, Bloodside's a terrible film. It's a, a very mi misogynistic, and but I mean, people know that going in now. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. and it is funny whether you like it or not. It's it's rather amusing, and um, it's just it has, there's nothing. <laughs> I, I don't know. It, it, the thing about it that is redeeming is that they shot it in 35 millimeter. It's well photographed. It's well lit. It looks like a movie, you know. Yeah. Whereas. Um, we have, we've uh, helped out some other filmmakers um, and, and we distribute one called uh, Meat for Satan's... Uh, I, I was just going to ask you about this one because I watched the video of you comparing the two films. Yeah, and, and if, if they would have just, you know, get better, you know, use, put the microphone near the mouth of the person, uh, don't use it, especially in those days when when Meat for Satan's Locker was made. And those people who made it are terrific. I've slept on their, I, I got to couch surf at times. And in Pittsburgh, I slept on their couch. And um, uh, they're great, you know, they love cinema. They they keep making movies. And and I think, you know, I think that they made a mistake there with the, and I talk about it, yeah. Maybe yeah. maybe that's what is redeeming about Blood Sucking Freaks. But other than that, I I, I think it's pretty evil. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't yeah. I, I do recommend if anybody has trauma now to watch that video of you talking about the what you don't want to do when you're making a film, comparing yeah. Meat for Satan's Icebox, I think it was, yeah, and and uh, Blood Sucking Freaks. I found that really informative and just interesting hearing you as someone who was in the film also talk about the things that were was very wrong with the film. Yeah, well, thank you, and uh, thanks for watching Trauma Now. Um, uh, there are a lot of, uh, I, th I think, if they're not there, let me know and we'll put them there. Uh, there are a lot of lessons that came out of my books that are visual, you know, how we raise money and stuff like that. Uh, I, I'm hoping that's there. If it's not, uh, I'll make sure it is. Do you see any other of those make your own damn movie? Lessons? It was a whole a ton of them. Yeah. There are some? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There was a ton of them in there. Great. Good. Well, I think it's a great platform. It's just uh, yeah. yeah, nobody knows about it. It's there's a wonderful app you can get on. You can see it through Roku and four or five other platforms, whatever they call. I'm, ju I'm just going to throw this out there. Any any ideas for bringing Edge TV back? 
I think it what what is Edge TV? I think some of it's up on on Trauma. Yeah, it is. I don't think uh, Trauma's Edge was a show that we made for a BBC in England. Oh, okay. And again, unfortunately, everybody's gone more for the uh, uh, the name uh, producers, and uh, uh, so it's you know all these European companies. Uh, the government is, uh, subsidizes a lot of it, and they they either don't want you know they either want these uh, <clears throat> government made domestic uh, movies or the big the big movies and uh, they're not uh, you know they don't have room for us anymore and uh, so uh, what are you going to do uh, we can't you know we, we, that was the end of trauma now we had i mean trauma's edge tv yeah. we had it uh, we did it for two years and uh, uh, but uh, you know, i think the only we just have to kind of we painted ourselves into a corner where we told we're totally everything we do is uh, uh, trauma just we do everything a studio does <laughs> except for one thing <laughs> we don't make money otherwise we're functioning uh, a small film studio for 48 years <laughs> we don't make any money either if that makes you feel better <laughs> <laughs> well you got your whole life ahead of you, you, know, you guys, <laughs> yeah you do fine <laughs> so Lloyd, another another thing that I think is coming up here a lot today is um, this idea of like the messages that uh, trauma films all embody. And I think that's very intentional in your bigger name ones, you know, ones that people have already seen, like Trauma's War, Terra Firmer, Tromeo and Juliet, Poultry Guys, all these, there's a lot of like societal or environmental or political messages. Um, so we've talked to some filmmakers who definitely embody this and they put messages in their films. And then we've talked to some who are kind of standoffish and they're like, oh, well, we don't think film, you know, is the platform for that. Um, but like, there's some pretty big names that have done the same, like George Romero, you know, is, um, kind of one of the biggest ones that comes to my mind. Yeah. The most underrated, uh, American director or under publicized, uh, except for my, my mentor, John G. Abelson who made Rocky, Karate Kid movies. I mean, everything he did, the Cry Uncle, by the way, is on Troma now. It came out X-rated, it's quite X-rated, but it's hilarious. It's not a sex film. It, he, he was hired to make a softcore sex film and he totally redid the script, got a, got a really talented guy to make it. And Cry Uncle is wonderful. And Avelson also uh, under, uh, you know, I don't believe Sunrise, Sun, Sun dance or whatever. I don't think they had no. Uh, Can certainly didn't do anything for him. Can Film Festival. You know. Yeah. He and George Romero and the, the major, major, in, both of them influences on uh, poor Lloyd Kaufman. Yeah. What? Well, so why? Great. And what are your thoughts about like having these messages in your films, and why is that so important to you? Because uh, uh, I think if I, I, I would have either gone. Uh, as a, you know, I think I would have maybe just being a narcissist, I, I might have gone into politics and, uh, you know, kiss my ass up, kiss uh, people's ass all the way up the line, <laughs> you know, and, uh, 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 and uh, you know, maybe I could have made a difference with, uh, you know, the terrible world we're in right now in our country. And, you know, maybe I could have, uh, you know, when I was, now it's 30 years too, too late, but uh, and I can't possibly buy a congressional seat. These people spend three or four million dollars. Yeah, I think more than that to, to get a, to buy a seat in Congress. You know, and they end up yeah. with AOC, who has no intention of helping anybody. It's all bullshit. She's a middle class woman. She goes to. I don't want to go into that. But uh, you know, that's what you get. You don't get the. Re, you know, you don't get the real people who are going to change things. Who are going to really. You know, when they speak out, somebody clubs them, and then that's the end. You don't hear from them. You know, too bad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they're all big on getting rid of Israel. Yeah, they're very good on that. <laughs> like that, we should get rid of Israel, right? They're too evil. <laughs> we need more uh, chaos, and <laughs> we don't want this little land that's, uh, <laughs> you know, tell, we control Israel. Tell them if you want any more bombs, stop, get out of the, uh, whatever that thing is, Gaza, get out. We can get them to get out. Nobody, you know, it's absurd. They can, we could get them to withdraw. Sure, it'd be very easy. Yeah. But nobody, you know, people are scared. Yeah. It's more about stuffing their, right? They're all millionaires. Yeah. Them. yeah. They, or they become, they become millionaires. 
you know, and they serve forever, right? You can't get rid of them. The guy from <coughs> Grassley uh, in I uh, Iowa, I think he's 80 something years old. <laughs> he's, I mean, Biden, Biden <laughs> is on automatic pilot. He looks like he's asleep. And yeah. they tried. At least Biden presented six trillion dollars. They should have dropped the hammer and do it. Why not? What? It, it's absurd. We need to invest in the future, or or it's we, we, we're dead. The country's finished. Yeah. Two trillion, two trillion dollars ain't gonna uh, solve it. You know, they're whittling it down to. They're, they're, they're not gonna give people automatic college. That's gone. That, why not? They. they uh, uh, you know, so the point is, I, 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 I had a very crazy communist, uh, almost communist grandmother who, who gave me a lot of stuff to read at a very young age. <laughs> she thought Castro was a hero when he kicked out uh, the dicta Batista, the dictator, and, uh, you know, Cuba was the whorehouse of America. Cuba was where, uh, you know, rich people would go to uh, gamble and, and get laid and, uh, you know, it, I mean, my folks would go there for vacations, you know. I mean, they, they, I don't think they got laid, but uh, uh, who knows? <laughs> who there? knows? Castro comes in. My grandmother w was ecstatic. She she worshipped him, and I know he's a bad dude, and I know that he, mm -hmm. he you know, free speech isn't there, but uh, they sure have good medical care, and people can read and write, and they they've got the child care, and they got a lot of things we don't have, yeah. so, uh, and they should have free speech. But the point is. Uh, she educated me on, uh, on that kind of stuff. And yeah. I, I was against the Vietnam War from the time I was in sixth grade. Uh, and uh, I did everything possible. Uh, I wrote it up for my Yale 50th reunion. They wanted us to put an essay, uh, send an essay in on, on our uh, memories of the Vietnam War period. So I wrote up exactly how I was a draft dodger and why. <laughs> why? Martin Luther King was right. Martin Luther King gave a speech at Riverside Church uh, where he, 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 he underlined the fact that the United States was, uh, was uh, warehousing and killing black people, sending him to uh, Vietnam to die, right? And the New York Times excoriated him, right? This wasn't the uh, one about the Washington where, uh, I mean, I get there, it's not that one. This one explains what Vietnam, you know, so now, now what's going on, we warehouse the young people in prisons, keep them in prison, right? If they, they can't pay $500 bail, they stay in until they get a trial. And how, how great, you know, we had 13 people in, in Rikers, Rikers prison in New York, 13 human beings to yeah. die of, of, of COVID. Who knows how many other people died in that prison? Sure. Jeez, Christ. I mean, it's awful. I, you know, uh, I mean, I, well, I'm sure uh, Brandon, Brandon, you are right. You seem to be black. Uh, uh, you, I'm sure you've had walking through a parking lot, people uh, that push down yeah. the lock. You know, you hear that click. Yeah. I mean, I had yeah. it when I had a beard. I remember, uh, and I looked a little hippie. I had a little bit of hair. You know, I was I looked like Harpo Marx, but uh, with a with a beard. But I remember people. Uh, uh, you know, just and uh, you know, I'm sure you had worse things than that. And yeah. it's a grace after all this time. Mm -hmm. And still don't have a new great society. That's it's it's, yeah, it's, it's hard. Un, it's unconscionable, right? Yeah. Terrible. So it it sounds like this is this has become your platform for expression to also do your part to contribute to make the world a better place by yes. sending thank these messages. You, thank you, for, you know, kind of agreeing with that. But uh, I love cinema. I, I, I'm addicted to it, and uh, uh, I like the, I like satire, and I like comedy. And yeah. the, the rub, to some extent, is that I've chosen, and Michael Hur is with me, I've chosen to do things that are rather graphic and uh, extreme, and satire, and satirical, uh, and slapstick. And uh, you know what's funny in Rhode Island is not uh, funny in uh, Massachusetts. What's funny in Massachusetts may not be funny in uh, India, or you know. Uh, you know, action is uh, understandable. You know, blow somebody up. Sure. People get that all over the world. Yeah, it's universal. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, during the war, you know, the studios uh, agreed to be censored by Hitler. You know, the scripts, they had German versions of their movies. And now we have Chinese, the Chinese who are exterminating uh, a race of Muslim people 
the Uyghurs, they're literally exterminating them, and the Tibetans, they're exterminating them. And uh, but uh, meanwhile, the Hollywood uh, the brass, the big shots, are creating acceptable uh, versions. So the, the Chinese can see how evil uh, we are and how evil the, uh, the uh, yeah, well, anyway, I've said enough. <laughs> That's the point. We gotta fight back. Do something, you know. Yeah. We we picketed uh, when Hillary was in the. There was a famous restaurant, and uh, Weinstein and Hillary were having a big liberal limousine party at Elaine's, which is a very it's closed now, but it was a very trendy restaurant. And Woody Allen shot movies there, and uh, uh, we live a couple of blocks away. So my wife, the, the owner, the, my wife, the owners like my wife a lot. The owner. Uh, my, like my wife, uh, and uh, the, uh, they were having this big uh, liberal, you know, limousine thing with Clinton. Uh, we had Toxie and Kabuki Man with picket signs, uh, uh, you know, decrying uh, the fact that uh, you know Clinton was a total phony and that uh, Bush was awful, and that uh, you know we had picket signs when when uh, when they gave that Lifetime Achievement Award to uh, to the guy who uh, you know made name names. Uh, uh, talented, yes. Uh, we made. Uh, uh, he was directed with Eli, Elia Kazan. They gave him. They gave him the Lifetime Achievement Award, right? After he names names, he causes people to kill themselves. He ruins people's careers. He ruins their lives. He doesn't have to name names because he was very successful Broadway director. He could have just left the movie business. He was Arthur Miller. Arthur Miller's the Broadway director. He turned people in. And, and I've read, it may not be true, that he did the same thing in Greece, <coughs> which has a big Turkish Greek thing going. And apparently he turned people in then to whatever generals demanded. Uh, uh, you know, and this guy gets the Academy Award. And, and uh, you know, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Spielberg uh, and uh, who's the other one? Uh, Martin Scorsese and Robert De Niro present the award. These great filmmakers, yeah. you know, wonderful. By the way, we owned De Niro's first movie. Uh, we didn't make it, but uh, my friend directed it and uh, we, yeah. we did the distribution. But De Niro and uh, Scorsese, I think it is, present him with the, present this pig who gave, well, not pig, this real <laughs> shit who, who, you know, destroyed people's lives unnecessarily. Uh, this, uh, the greatest, the greatest award you can give a Hollywood, uh, a film person, the highest award. And, and you can see the people standing up, um, um, Ah, what's his name? Chris Christopherson. He didn't stand up. Uh, you know, there were people who got to, and and uh, Spielberg was kind of doing. Uh, he was kind of doing a little of both. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Forget it. Uh, 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 but the point is, these fuckers were, were supporting this guy. Yeah. He was on today. He'd be big. He'd be. He'd be. He'd be uh, what's his name? Uh, I, I have Rose. Uh, what's Rose's? Uh, if it's a movie star, Rose, uh, she's so woke. She's, uh, uh, you know, uh, ruined people. Uh, Rose McGowan. Rose oh, McGowan. That's what I was wondering if you were going to say Rose McGowan, yeah. And, and uh, Wild, who's that? Olivia Wild, is that her yeah. name? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, isn't it? And she's, she, she's uh, bad-mouthing people. Uh, uh, hashtag me too people. And, and yet, uh, she's, uh, Wild is in this uh, happily posing for a, a poster of whatever movie she was in that Brian Singer, a pedophile, directed. No problem there. Uh, you know, I mean, it's it's all fucked up, yeah. right? And and the good news is that I think it's made it better for uh, comedian. You know, independent. Uh, uh, what's his name? <laughs> the other guy with commercial with the in initials uh, was funny as fuck, but got into trouble for masturbating. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Louis C.K. Yeah, Louis yep. C.K. Hey, okay, masturbate, so big deal. And and they all killed him. Uh, yeah. uh, they didn't kill Weinstein. They, they Everybody knew what he was doing. Everybody knew it. Nobody talked. I didn't know it, but I didn't have anything to do with Weinstein. Uh, although although I, I made a, uh, I did a budget for Weinstein and his brother a long, long time ago, for which I was not paid. And Michael Hurst, after that, he would never talk to them. So we never, we had no... Uh, communication but but uh, it's just so hypocritical right yeah it's bullshit yeah posing, posing, uh, fake fake uh, you know cancel thing and and Chappelle was terrific 
He was at the Hollywood Bowl. Did you guys hear about that? Apparently, he was at the Hollywood Bowl, uh, and they gave him a steep. I don't know if he was there as a spectator or whether he was actually performing, but they gave him a standing ovation forever. And he said, hey, if this is uh, being canceled, uh, I'm loving it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, the trend, the, the thing may be uh, going, you know, maybe the pendulums. That's what I was just going to say. I think that there's um, going to be some pushback to that cancel culture now because it yeah. it seems like it's just happening to everybody. So it's in this <gasps> look at I might my... be able to say something. Say that again. I might be able to say something. We have to edit so much stuff on this. Every time I say something, they're like, you might not want to say that. Um, yeah, there was, uh, I was actually going to post Honky Holocaust one time, um, but we couldn't. Uh, uh, Black Lives Matter had just come out and uh, we all supported it. And, uh, you know, we couldn't we couldn't justify posting Honky Holocaust. Yeah, um, I, mean, I, still, I never posted it. So yeah, well, it's probably safe. Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah kind of an extreme movie but it does get people thinking i hope yeah well it's kind of like what you're saying lloyd it's like a lot of the films go to a place that's really uncomfortable or that people don't want to go to but the message if people actually pay attention the message is clear yeah. you're not yeah. promoting you know these vile acts or you know um you know these really rigid uh wrong mindsets you're actually kind of highlighting it's like you said it's satire you're you're highlighting how absurd a lot of these people are. Make the make the make people remember, right? Yeah. Citizen right. Toxie's gonna that that guy at Citizen Toxie's got some major. Uh, it, 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 we still haven't figured out a woman's rights. Citizen Toxie had a big uh, abortion uh, uh, a message there. Uh, yeah. And and we're still we're still out now. We're, it's worse than ever. They may reduce. They may get rid of Road v Wade. Uh, so, I, I, oh, uh, yeah, I, I just, it's just uh, we have free speech. Uh, <laughs> we have free speech as long as we don't say anything. Right. There's and this amazing, there's wife. this amazing scene in uh, Terra Firmer when <laughs> do, do, I don't know if um, ex exactly how it's said, but uh, they're talking about the film, the trauma films, and he's like, and you can buy that on VHS and yeah. DVD, <laughs> and then he says. Uh, something about exactly what you're talking about with trauma war and like how they were like really shoving HIV and AIDS um, at the time in people's faces, but it like says it in a way like that's, you know, like this is a, a, a right. positive Trent message. Hager. That was Trent Hager. Trent Hager had the part. They, yeah, it was. And Will Keenan was the uh, Hollywood, uh, you know, everything's Jaws is the, the, the yeah. great movie and Samuel Fuller's shark wasn't, you know, the, right. Trent Hager's character loved uh, uh, Shark. And, and we put a little bit of Shark because we own that movie on uh, Terra Firmer by Samuel Fuller, <laughs> who was a friend of mine. Samuel Fuller loved uh, uh, Troma's War. He got it, you know, because he, he made War Pigs. Yeah. yeah. He, he made that White Dog movie, which was prohibited until, uh, after, I think after he died, they finally brought it out all chopped up, I guess. I don't know. I tried to... Uh, to find the miss the footage that was cut out of a shark and restore it to Sam's original, but uh, I guess it's it was, it was some sleazy producer destroyed it or something. I don't know. Anyway, it's, oh. it's Burt Reynolds' movie, and and it ain't bad. You can see Sam Fuller. You see certain scenes where you can. It's definitely Sam Fuller, but <laughs> unfortunately, it could have been a masterpiece, and it shouldn't have been called Shark either. So. Sure. <clears throat> I wanted to ask you about um, a trauma film I had seen ages ago and you're in it and I can't find it these days. And I was going to ask you if it's ever going to come on trauma now. Um, it's the movie Hanger where you play the transgender hooker Melvina. Yeah, that's, a, uh, that's a, not our movie though. Uh, Hanger, it's, yeah. So I was wondering if that would, uh, so you guys don't own the rights to that or any, you're no, not, no. you're just, it, you just play a part in that. Yep. And uh, by the way, uh, I, I made a, a behind the scenes uh, short lesson uh, on the on the set of. I watched it and that because I was looking for it and so that came up on Troma now, but I, I was I've always wanted because I wanted to show it to Josh because Josh loves, you know, the craziest movies too. So it's like I wanted him to see that and I could, I just haven't been able to find it again. Interesting. Uh, the guy who made it is a very good guy. Uh, uh, he's can it's Canadian. I'm, that's weird that you can't find it. Uh, I'll, I'll have to take a deeper that. look. I got his number. That's a good idea. Maybe he'll put it on 
That would be great for trauma now. You know, we've got we've got Frankenhooker now. We got yes. Maniac Cop. We got the the uh, uh, what is it? Uh, That's the case two and three. The exterminator. Remember that one? That's great. Mm -hmm. And they're good. They're fun. They're, you know. You have the exterminator. Yeah, we have that. Yeah. Ooh, I didn't but, even know that. Uh, we got we got uh, well, Dave got trauma now last month, and then yeah. I took over this month. So we're we're digging we're digging deep. Uh, I don't know if we put those up yet. I I'm not that. They're uh, they're on there. All the ones you just mentioned are on there. Yep. Well, we we have another. We made it. We we we've got another group of films that are, were entrusted to us uh, that we hope to give new life to. Uh, so we continue to put up very interesting movies plus the movies we produced ourselves. And if some great script comes across that's really different, any genre. Yeah. I'll do any as long as it's entertaining and uh, has a little bit of something to say uh, you have combat shock on there too which is one oh, i think combat yeah shock. i think people need to see that I, it's unbelievable that is such a good film mm -hmm. and uh it, it, people just it takes time it takes time but uh, it, it it's not it's, it's it took i think 15 or 20 years for combat shock to again, break even yeah you know, it, it's just it's shocking how long it takes but it's we have no money to advertise so you guys and others who are fans uh, are, uh, uh, you know, the shithouse guys. And, uh, you know, I have 50,000 people on my Twitter and they help us and uh, Facebook, you know. So our fans are wonderful. They really, in fact, most of the people who work for us, we only have us, about 10 people. They all came as fans. They're all people who either worked on a movie or worked uh, as an intern or, uh, you know, work and then work their way up to a real job at Troma. I think everybody there is, you know, a very solid fan, and they are there because they love cinema and they they, they want to learn. You know, they want to yeah. learn and perhaps make. And you guys paid them all through the uh, shutdown, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We paid everybody. You bet. Yeah, we paid everybody, and uh, the only movie everybody. studio to do that. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anybody. Yeah, there were lots of layoffs. I agree with you there. Uh, Again, we only have about 10 people, but so what? We have no money. We still paid the people. We probably could have made, uh, kept all that money and made a movie or put, we haven't, uh, my partner and I, I don't think, uh, very, very few paychecks have come in in the last 10 years. We're kind of, you know, what do you call it? Running on the memory of fumes. We're staggering, just get, and it's all thanks to our fans that, that we keep going, no question about it. So, so here's a question. Uh, so we, we, ha we have some listeners and a good uh, social media following and stuff. For right. anybody listening or anybody out there um, who's a fan or even a fan of independent film, what can they do to help Troma stay alive and get the word out or help you in any way, shape, or form? Well, thank you. Thanks so much for asking that, Josh. Uh, I think that follow us, retweet us. Uh, we've got a lot of graphics that we put up on... on uh, Twitter, Facebook, go to Troman. Well, uh, the best thing would be uh, if we could get 10,000, we don't have 10,000 subscribers. If we could get to 10,000 subscribers, I think Troma would be, uh, you know, would be, uh, would continue to, would not be running on the memory of fumes. We'd have enough to pay our nut and then we could pay more attention to making the movies. You know, but, I mean, you know, it's very hard to make a movie that, and we don't make any money. Uh, you know, at some point <laughs> you run out of people who are going to invest with you unless they're patrons of the art and uh, hashtag Shakespeare shitstorm. Uh, uh, my wife and I put up about uh, more than, yeah, I'd say three quarters of the money and the rest was put up by people who just wanted to make, help us make the movie uh, with no, uh, you know, basically donation. It wasn't, they didn't even go into uh, you know, Indiegogo or uh, the other thing. Uh, they just gave it to uh, uh, Tempest and uh, just to, to support, you know, which is pretty damn nice. So, uh, but on the other hand, uh, <laughs> I think they would have loved to see hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm uh, as, a, as a success. And maybe it will be, maybe time <laughs> will get the word out. Maybe you guys will see it and love it and talk about yeah. it and retreat the, the, our trailers and, uh, Get, get trauma movies into your local theater. We're currently uh, trying to contact theaters to put hashtag Shakespeare shitstorm or divide and conquer or the final beginning slashing two. 
um, into uh, movie theaters and uh, it ain't easy. Uh, the other two, the two films that I produced but didn't direct, they are getting into festivals, but you don't get paid for that. Sure. They, fact, is they, I need is I they, need you dead uh, trauma film? No, but the Rocco who wrote and directed it is my new assistant, and uh, he worked on the, the hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm, okay. and made, uh, um, I need you dead uh, after that, and uh, he he's moved from Portland to uh, New York, and uh, two other people with whom he worked are, 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 are Sophie, whose last name I can't remember. <laughs> She's been doing makeup for us. Uh, we've got, uh, uh, we've got, uh, if you go to, I don't know if you know about Open Seas, S-E-A-S, like oceans. Open Seas is a platform for NFTs, uh, non-fungible tokens. And we have a bunch of them up there. And now we're going to put up uh, a movie uh, that a person uh, we're putting up Battle of Love's Return, uh, my first uh, theatrical uh, crit critical success, Battle of Love's Return, in which Oliver Stone and Lynn Lowry uh, featured. Uh, it's an interesting film, but uh, kind of unwatchable. We're putting that, uh, although it got good reviews in the New York Times, major critics kind of liked it. Uh, and we had it run in a, quite a number of theaters and universities. Um, and uh, there's some other people on it, but uh, uh, we, we, uh, we're gonna put that, that we just made a, a video uh, describing how the fact that people can now buy the entire movie uh, with the, all the rights uh, uh, and copyright and everything as a non-fungible token. That, that, so yeah, that should get some attention. I don't think yeah. anybody, other than the Fugees, uh, no, is it the Fugees or uh, remember that guy who was in jail? Who, uh, his name had some no 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 vowels. What happened? Well, now I'm going to try to replace the batteries on the thermostat upstairs, but I might need some. All right, I'll, I may have to get up for some. Uh, Got to do some plumbing. The boiler's leaking. I'll be there. Uh, I don't know. I don't know anything. I don't even know what to do with the car. But anyway, <laughs> uh, you guys are great, and uh, I appreciate it. That yeah. uh, anything else you want to talk about? Or we could continue this on another occasion. I, I apologize. Uh, no, that's okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, here we go. Uh, uh, Thank you so much. Thank and, you. Uh, you guys are the best. I, I've had a plan. That was awesome. I'm sorry about awesome. the spoiler. Uh, it's really no, bad. that's okay. So, this is Brandon. Hey, this is Dave. This is Joshua. Yo, this is uh, Lloyd Kaufman, uh, clarinetist, uh, eighth clarinetist with the Tromaville Orchestra. And uh, thank you for watching PVD podcast, the best. Let me tell you. <laughs> watching. I love it. Have a good night. Thank you. Take it easy.